Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel with Steery here. Thank you for tuning in to listen to more folk tales from Shropshire. And thank you if you're listening on the podcast, I appreciate it. And also, thank you if you're listening on YouTube. I do forget to thank my podcast people, and I'm sorry, I will do that more often. So we're looking at life and death. The Prison Chaplain. They hang us now in Shrewsbury Gall. The whistles blow forlorn. And trains all night grown on the rail. To men who die at dawn. And that's by A.E. Houseman. Public hangings. Yes, these used to happen in England. They were a big event in Shrewsbury. The executioners took place on top of the gatehouse of the prison. The Dana, Shrewsbury Goal, is next to, next to the train station. And special trains were laid on for people to come and watch the spectacle. Great crowds gathered outside the goal. Food vendors sold their wares. Special broadsheets were printed, giving lurid details of the crime and pickpockets. Came and had a field day. In fact, it seemed the only people who stayed away were the burglars taking advantage of the opportunity to rob from empty houses. Shrewsbury Hangman refused to stay in Shrewsbury. Instead, he stayed at the Pound at Liebert Wood to avoid meeting obvious family members of his victims. He did not want to cross members of people he had hung, that was sure. On the day of the hanging, he would walk the train station. Now, a building suppliers, join the crowd taking the train to Shrewsbury, get the train back and stay a second night at the pound before heading home. He was quiet, an unassuming man, and... Those travelling on the train next to him never knew they sat next to the hangman himself. The perk of his job was to receive the rope used for the victim and often he sold it for far more than the fee. Shrewsbury Gull, more often known as the Dana, was not a pleasant place to be but it was one of the better gulls in the country. It had the lowest hours of hard labour, though that was perhaps less about charity and more about being able to feed the inmates, less about not having to invest in hard labour equipment, such as the crank or treadmill. The staff at the goal included the governor, surgeon, taskmaster, schoolmaster, matron, porter, watchman and six turnkeys, both male and female. One of the most important posts at the goal was the chaplain. It was very much depended when you were incarcerated at the level of spiritual care you received. Each chaplain had to keep a prisoner's character book. Some chaplains obviously had little hope of repentance or redemption for any of the prisoners, writing long analysis of their various inmates' lack of merit. It happened one time that a new chaplain was appointed, a young man with a young family, determined to make a difference and bring the light of God into the prison. At first, the prisoners thought it was terribly funny when he came to them and earnestly talked of ways they could change their lives. They thought he was making fun of them. When they realised he was serious, they stared at him in bemusement. But the chaplain's opinion was important. He kept a record of their character. He could be called on as a reference after their incarceration. And he decided how much money they should be allocated when they left the prison. None of the short-term prisoners dared laugh or make fun of him. Those with years of imprisonment dead or the hangman's rope looming did not have the same inhibitions. They laughed at his innocent, made rude gestures that he didn't understand and followed behind him with their eyes, lifted to heaven, holding their palms together as if praying, while those looking on sniggered. 
The young chaplain refused to be daunted and slowly, very slowly, he began to earn their respect. Word reached the inmates of ex-convicts who had given up hope of a decent employment and yet, somehow, the chaplain had found them a job. The chaplain visited each prisoner individually when their front of bravado was loosened and he would sit quietly and listen. Eventually, one by one, the prisoners began to confide in him. When they found that their fears, worries and confessions were not written up in the prison journal, when word did not inevitably reach the ear of the governor, they began to regard him as a friend. Soon, no one dared make fun of the chaplain. Though the chaplain might pretend not to notice, the other prisoners would make sure that the clown was well and truly punished. As the inmates began to bear their souls to the chaplain, they talked to their families what they would be doing if they weren't in prison. The chaplain asked each convict if they had one thing they would do if they were free. He did his best to grant each prisoner one wish. One man knew that his mother would be struggling with the winter coming and no one there to chop wood for her. The chaplain went to chop wood. Another prisoner, younger than the chaplain, was in prison during the birth of his first child. The chaplain went to visit his wife and child, giving her a little money and passing on the father's love. And so it went on. He lit candles at funerals, gave Christmas presents to children and paid month's rent before someone's wife was evicted. Fortunately, the chaplain's own life was as dedicated as her husband. She forgave him his absence and the money given away. She went with him to help the wives, left looking after children on their own. She also supported each of the prisoners' mothers when it was needed, and their grown-up children that faced the hangman's rope. But disease does not discriminate. It takes the loved and the lonely, the innocent and the tarnished all the same. Tragedy struck in the chaplain's house. His beloved youngest daughter was sick. The doctor said she was failing fast and it was only a matter of time. The chaplain went into prison but stayed only to do the bare minimum of his duties. After three days of seeing, the chaplain pale and drawn, worry etching years upon his face. One of the prisoners stopped him before he could hurry off again. Father, what is it? We all know something's wrong but no one will tell us what's going on. The chaplain managed a weak smile and said, I'm sorry, Tom. I know I'm neglecting you all, but it's my daughter. She's fading fast. I should have known she was too good for this world. The Lord is taking her back into his arms. Tom stood aside and let the chaplain pass. But within an hour, every prisoner knew the news. The next morning, the chaplain came to read prayers from the liturgy. But before he could begin, one of the prisoners stood up and said, Chaplain, you've done more for me than I ever deserved. You never thought twice about giving a little bit of your life to help my family. I'd be glad to have the chance to do the same for you. Before God, I promise to give six months of my life to your little girl. Um, that's a lovely thought, Joseph, but I'm sure that's not quite how it works. But already was a prisoner, another one standing up, offering six months of his life too. She gave weeks and months. Some gave more. Some gave years. And they were happy to do so because they were incarcerated for life. Listening to the promises, the chaplain's eyes grew bright and choked back with tears. At last, each prisoner had spoken and the chapel grew quiet. Thank you, the chaplain croaked. With a shaky voice, he continued reading the liturgy. When he arrived home, his wife flew to the door to meet him. For the first time in a week, there was colour in her cheeks. She threw her arms around his neck. It was a miracle, the doctor said. He'd never seen a recovery like it. That girl lived until she was well up into her nineties. And when she did die, she had children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren gathered about her. 
the story was passed down in the family and was collected from the girl's great-granddaughter. The end, of course. Hmm, what do you make of that? Do you think that they gave their life for real to the little girl? It's possible. Faith can do wondrous things regarding what it is. Faith-wise, because we're all different, I do believe it can do wonderful things. Please hit that like button. It's free and it actually does help. Leave a comment if you're able to. I like to read comments. Share if you can. And if you've not yet subscribed, please consider doing so. Thank you for listening and many, 